Hey, what's up? So in this video, we're going to talk about how to determine whether a string is balanced with brackets. So what that basically means is that we're given a string, it has a different kind of brackets, like we have parentheses, square brackets, and curly braces. And we basically want to make sure that there are no open brackets or no open braces in any case, or that we don't have extras. So for example, let's say we have this right here, this example. So we start off with an open, opening parenthesis, and then inside that we have an opening bracket, and then we have an opening parenthesis, but then right after that, the closing bracket that we have is a closing parenthesis. It's not anything else. If it were instead to be a closing bracket, okay, so if I had open parenthesis, open bracket, another open parenthesis, but then a closing bracket, this would not qualify as a string with balanced brackets. This would be incorrect. The other thing to note is that if we go through our entire string and we end up having more closing brackets than we have opening brackets, then our string is not balanced. So right here, we have the algorithm that we can use to determine if a string is balanced. We're basically going to be using stacks to keep track of all the opening braces and their corresponding closing bra brackets. So we start off by creating a stack. So that's this right here. And then we go through every character in the string. So we start off with, let's say, the first character. So that's this one. So because this is an opening bracket, we can add it to the stack. So let's say we create a stack. And remember that a stack is going to be a type of collection that allows us to add stuff to the end of the stack and remove stuff and access stuff from the end of the stack. So currently we have our opening parentheses. Now we move on to the next character and that's in opening bracket, opening square bracket. So we can add that as well. And then we have an, another opening parentheses. But this time we have a closing parentheses. So here we want to make sure that this is actually valid. So when I say valid, I mean that it has to be the same as the last bracket we used. So in this case, it has to be same as this. It has to correspond to this opening parentheses. So this is an opening parentheses. So this will work. So in this case, if we recognize this, we also need to make sure, and this is one thing that I didn't include here, but there's one thing we have to make sure, that we have to remove this item from the stack. So we get rid of that, if it is the correct corresponding bracket. So I'll just add that here, and remove stack value while you're at it. Okay, let's continue. So now we're at this character. So again, this is an opening character. So we can put this opening curly brace here. And now we are on this character. Well, this is a closing bracket. And in this case, it is a closing curly brace. So we know that we can use this one. So we can get rid of this and our string is still valid. Next, we have this bracket. Well, this is a closing bracket and we wanna make sure that it corresponds with the topmost stack value. Well, the topmost stack value is an opening square bracket, and this is a closing square bracket, so it works. So we can continue, we remove that, and now we move on. Next, we have this opening parenthesis. So we can add that to our stack, and we can move on. And after that, we have a closing parenthesis. Well, this matches the topmost stack value, which is this, so we can remove that. Next value is another closing parenthesis, and this matches this stack value, which is an opening parenthesis, so we can remove that. So currently our stack is empty. Well, at this point, if we were to somehow encounter a closing bracket of any kind, like a closing parenthesis, a closing curly brace, or a closing square bracket, like let's say I included this right here. Well, that means that our next character we're checking is a closing bracket, but we can't actually do that because the stack is empty. We have nothing to compare it to. So that's where this clause comes in. And in this case, we don't have a string with balanced brackets, so we return false. But anyways, let's continue. So our, our stack is currently empty, and now we're adding an opening brace. So we can add that to the stack and move on. Next character is an opening bracket. Add that to the stack and we move on. And now we have a closing bracket, and that corresponds with the topmost stack value. So we remove that and keep going. And finally, our last character is a closing curly brace. And that corresponds with our last character here. So we can remove that. And that's it for our string.
And again, at this point, if we have any remaining items in our stack, that means we had some extra opening bracket. So that means our string is not balanced. But here our stack is empty, so we know this works. So finally, we can return true. All right, so now that we've gone through an example for this, let's code this out. So before we start writing our actual subroutine for this problem, we need to import something called deck from collections. So from collections import deck. And we're doing this because we want to remain as efficient as possible with our stack. And a deck is pretty efficient in terms of appending items and removing items from ends and beginnings of the list. So now we can set our function. We'll call it is balanced. We'll say def is balanced. We'll give a string as a parameter. And the first line in our function is going to be creating a new stack. So we'll say stack is equal to deck. And our append and remove functions or our pop functions work the same way in decks as they do in lists. So if we append, it'll go to the end of the list. And if we pop, it'll remove from the end of the list. Now the next part is we're going to create a dictionary containing the different kind of brackets we have. So brackets is equal to this maps to the closing parentheses, and then the opening bracket, square bracket, maps to the closing square bracket, and then the opening curly brace maps to the closing curly brace. And the reason we do this is because it makes it really easy for us to pair up brackets that correspond with each other. So if we happen to find a closing brace and we want to compare it to the correct opening brace, this allows us to easily do that. So now we can iterate through our string. So we'll say for car and string. And so here is where we do our condition. If this is an opening brace, so if car is in brackets, when we write this, this checks if it's in the list of keys, which means it checks if it's an opening parenthesis, an opening square bracket, or an opening curly brace. So if it's an opening character, then we want to add it to the stack, stack.append. So that's the easy part. Next, if it's not in the opening brackets, that means it's a closing bracket. Well, in this case, we want to check for two things. One is the stack empty, because if it's empty, like we saw before, that means that we can't actually map that closing brace to anything. So if length of stack is equal to zero. Now, the other thing to check is in case the stack is not empty, if the character that we have for our closing brace does not correspond to the correct opening bracket. That means this is not a balanced string. And we can use the dictionary to access this. So or character, which is our closing brace, does not equal to the correct character associated with this bracket. So it does not equal to brackets stack.pop. And we're removing it here because we anyways have to remove the last item in the stack. And if we're anyways going to return false, it doesn't matter what was in our stack anyway. So we'll just say stack.pop. And that anyways allows us to get and remove that last item. So if this is the case, we return false. Now, after all this, the only possibility for failure is that if the stack is non-empty, which means we had more opening characters than we had closing characters. Well, if that's the case, we return length of stack is equal to zero. Because if it's equal to zero, that means our string is balanced. And if it's not, our string is not balanced. So that's it for this code. Let's test it out. So let's take that string we had before. String is equal to this, and then we have this, and then open and close, and then open and close again, and then we close this one. And then we do that, that, and then we have this, and we close it off with that. So we should see that our output is true, but let's test that out. So print is balanced string. So we have that. Let's test this. And we see that we get true. All right, so it looks like that worked. Let's try and modify this a little bit. Let's say I remove that character. Now, this should definitely be false because this character that we see here for a closing brace is not equal to this character. So that means we had an extra opening brace. So let's run this. And we see that we get false. All right, cool. Looks like that worked. Let's try the other case where we have extra closing braces. So let's add this back. And now let's add a parenthesis at the end. So we'll run this. And we see that we get false for this as well. So that's it for this video, and I hope this was helpful.